Hi, I'm Nancy Lyell, author of The Reluctant Owlette. I was a teacher and reading specialist for 10 years, and I really have a passion for the study of how our minds learn how to process the written word, how to build a love for literature into children. Um, all of these things are really interesting topics to me, and now that I am an author of a children's book, I really, really wanted to dive into these subjects and do a, a video series on literacy. So, welcome! The first thing I want to talk about is presence. This is actually my word for 2019, which I was inspired to use because of my encounters with the owls this past year. Um, I had been dealing with some stressful issues in 2018 and going out into the woods and I would miss the owls, I would startle them away, I would miss a great shot of them because I wasn't paying attention and I was up in the future or in the past. And so I was really inspired to get back into the present moment and really focus on that for 2019. So presence, I know you might be thinking, what on earth does presence have to do with literacy? But I will get to that in just a second. Before I do that, I want to talk about what presence means. So to me, presence is about really being rooted in the moment, in your body, in your surroundings, and in the emotions that you're feeling. Like really being aware of what you're feeling and experiencing in the moment. And this is something that can be very difficult for anybody to do. Children, adults, it doesn't matter. That's why we have so many issues with coming up with distractions and procrastinations and addictions and all of these things that crop up and take us away from ourselves and from the present moment. It's everywhere. Like, we all struggle with this. And especially in this world where we are bombarded with distractions and technology, that can be very difficult. Technology really pulls us out of ourselves and pulls us out of the present moment. So it's really important to help bring ourselves back in. And that's not always the case. I know that's a little bit of a generalization. Um, there are a lot of aspects of technology that can really actually help you focus and be very present. But I think in general, a lot of the ways that we use technology can be very distancing from ourselves, our experience, who we are, what we're doing in that moment. I'm thinking about the Insta scroll right now. To me, presence is essential to succeed at anything or to really just experience anything. Like you really have to work on presence. And so that's one of the most important things to talk about when we're talking about literacy practice. To me, it's so important if you're going to be working on literacy skills to really bring a sense of presence to that moment. I mean, honestly, I think presence is important in anything and everything that you do, but particularly for building literacy skills in young people, reading is really about focusing. It's about being able to follow trains of thought. It's about being able to decode language. And all of these things really require us to be present in our body and present with what we're doing. I think children today possibly struggle with presence more than any other generation has because of all of the technological distractions in their lives. I think it's absolutely essential that we practice presence and bring it into literacy skill building. So how do we go about this? How do we bring presence into literacy? First of all, my most important tip is that I'd say 95% of the time that you are working with your child, student, or whomever you're working with, make sure you have an actual book. An actual paper book. Not an e-reader, not a digital book, not a PDF. I think this is extremely important, especially when you're dealing with struggling readers. This is my own opinion based on my beliefs, my feelings, and the experience that I had working in education for 10 years. I really believe that it is essential for young people to be able to hold a book in their hand and have an experience in that way, in that tangible, physical way. That is not to say that e-readers are useless or that they shouldn't be using them. That's another discussion for another time. 
but I really believe that especially with struggling readers, they need an actual book. Always lean toward having a physical book during literacy skills practice as much as you can in order to help build that sense of presence. Secondly, make sure that you pick something that they're going to like and enjoy. In fact, let me amend that by saying let them pick what it is. And it doesn't even have to be a book. It could be a comic book. It could be a um, comic section from the newspaper. Uh, it could be the back of a cereal box if they're a really struggling reader and that's the only way that you can get them to engage with text. Let them pick what it is. Let them pick. If you choose something that is going to bore them, you've already lost the battle. When you sit down to start reading, something that's really important is to kind of touch in with each other and with your child or student's emotional state at that point, especially regarding reading. So I want you to think about this from the perspective of a struggling reader. So think about a time in your childhood when the absolute worst thing that could have happened, happened. Like the first time you had to take a shower in the locker room after PE, or the first time you forgot your homework and your teacher yelled at you in front of the entire classroom, or you had toilet paper stuck to the bottom of your shoe and again, everybody laughed at you. Any of those things, think about the heat of your body, how much you were sweating, how you just couldn't bear to be in that moment and you were just God, please get me out of here. Think about that. And that is often how struggling readers feel every time they engage with text or with a book. And when you think about how much engagement we have with text and how many times we are asked to communicate and to speak, to read, to write, that's a lot of stress on a child. So when you're going through this process, it might take you a little bit of time to get to the actual reading. So what I want you to do is to question them very casually, very coolly, ask them how they're feeling about it. So hey, how do you feel about this book? Or whatever it is. Let them look at it. You excited about reading right now? How do you feel about this? How do you feel about reading? Let them give you whatever information they give you without turning it into an interrogation just come from a place of curiosity. Play with it. See what kind of information that you can get. The absolute most important thing is to keep it casual and just help them get focused on what they're feeling. If they're really nervous and upset, talk them through it. Ask them questions. Don't ask them to perform. Don't tell them what they have to do. And by all means, do not say, well, you know what? We're just going to sit and read this book no matter how you feel and we're going to do it for like 10 minutes and then you can go do what you want. This is happening. Like we're doing this. Don't do that. Don't say, hey, if you read this book, you can play a video game. Don't do that. One of the worst things that you can do is to frame reading as an obligation, a chore, a stressful activity, an activity that creates boredom. And you definitely don't want to put yourself in the position of juxtaposing reading with other pleasurable activities, especially video games. Then they're always in this balance and you're always trying to make a bargain. Bad, bad, bad. You don't want to do that. Keep it light. Keep it separate from other pleasurable activities that they really want to do. And really do your best to associate reading with pleasure, with rewards with satisfaction. This is really important to keep things positive. So if you've gone through some questions and you start feeling like there's an opening there and that there's a willingness to try, go for it. You just wanna make sure that they feel safe and supported, that this activity is not gonna cause them stress or make them doubt their intelligence. That's the most important thing, create a comfortable, supportive environment. If your child isn't necessarily a struggling reader, you might end up dealing with a lot of boredom issues. You know, the... Can I play Mario Kart, please? You might get a lot of that. Be prepared for that. And again, that is something that you're not going to want to push against. You're not going to want to threaten. You're not going to want to offer rewards for reading. Reading should be its own reward. 
So do your best to pull out some questions with them when you're when you're dealing with their boredom. See if you can find out what's the root cause of it. Maybe they just picked the wrong book. A lot of literacy practice is just about teaching your child how to pick things that they'll enjoy reading. So teach them how to do that. Teach them how to identify what they'll enjoy. Teach them how to find joy in reading. So the last thing that I want you to do to be present with reading is to have your child touch the book. Have them hold it. Have them feel it. Have them flip through the pages. Have them smell it. Maybe it's a library book and has that wonderful old dingy smell that library books have. Have them just feel. Like feel the weight of it. Feel it in their hands. Engage with it physically. This is such an important part of reading. And it's something that we kind of lose, especially in this age of e-readers. And again, I'm not knocking e-readers, but it's just really important for young people to really feel the excitement of having a book. And one of those feelings is just that idea that you start here and there's this whole world that happens in the middle. And then at the very end, where does it end? How does it end? This also really helps them get into their physical body. Good luck and happy reading.